Hey, Senator, why don't we start yesterday with the the supposed assassination attempt on Vladimir Putin. That's at least what Russia is calling it. Uh, what can you tell us? What do you know? So uh, I don't have the latest facts on it, but at, at this moment in time, I don't think that you could confirm that this was done by the Ukrainians at all. So um, that's just where we're at. I'll, I'll get another, I'll get a briefing on it later this morning. Um, right. But at, but at this moment in time, there's there's no evidence out there that that's the case. David, it's fascinating, wasn't it, that a couple of days ago we get news that leaked documents show that Russians are preparing, I mean, Putin's people preparing to tell the propagandists that things aren't going to go as well in Ukraine over the next several months than they expected, and to prepare them, uh, if not for defeat, uh, but to have greatly diminished expectations. Uh, and then suddenly, a Radio Shack drone hits the Kremlin. Yeah, it's kind of. Hey, well, look, I mean, did you see that it's, thing? It, no, it's like, hey, Going. look over here. You know, it's it's completely not credible. Yeah. No, that's a good impression. Thank you so much. <laughs> of a drone. I've tried to fly a Radio Shack yeah. drone before, and it no, ended it, up about like that one. No, no, no literally, he did, and it, it was in a tree. Yeah. It, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, they obviously had more experienced drone flyers working for the Kremlin uh, than you, perhaps. But still, they, the Russians were not able to make an attack on themselves which this probably was, look credible, much less an attack on Ukraine. Yeah, you think uh, it was false flag? Well, Operation. I mean, it, 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 they do that. You know, they do that a lot. They, they've, they've, they've done it in the past. Uh, I, I noted the White House yesterday, their statement was, we don't have enough information to confirm whether this was a false flag operation. <laughs> it wasn't right. to confirm right. whether it was Ukrainian. So right. that's a hint. Amy, we talked about it off the top. Very interesting that Kevin McCarthy is he said that he will stand by MTG until the bitter end. He certainly didn't do that on Ukraine. I think he surprised a lot of people. I just speak for myself. I mean, it certainly made me uh, exhale uh, when he went after the Russian journalist. I said, no, 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 we're we're standing shoulder to shoulder. You're killing kids. You need to get out of Ukraine now. I mean, what political ramifications does that have for him inside of his caucus Within moving the caucus, forward? I think it, it highlights the fact that inside the caucus, and quite frankly, inside the Republican Party, that position of Marjorie Taylor Greene about Ukraine, about America's role in the world, is not the majority opinion. You can see it in polling as well. There is certainly a, a segment of the Republican base who like the idea of America first, but they also want an America first that is strong, America first that says we want to make sure that the bad guys aren't doing bad things. And so this idea that uh, the Republican conference is going to be driven by the voices of a handful. Of oh, the not, extreme. Yeah, yeah. The extreme. And, and, rest and, a little and bit. yet yeah. those extremes, Simone, they are the loudest. They are the ones who are defining what the Republican Party is for mainstream Americans. They have the largest megaphones, but I think Amy's point is very important. We have to remember that this is a small fraction of the House Republican caucus. We have to be very specific because we're not talking about Republicans in the Senate. No, we're not. We are yeah. talking about House Republicans. Um, and, and so I think as people write their stories and the analysis comes, that has to faction in. I always go back to the question of what are the voters saying? What are the people in the state saying? How are people feeling? And it is the voters who who a lot are dictating what is happening. I will note that these folks with the, the largest megaphones, a small minority, these are also folks who have been fiercely loyal to Donald Trump. And again, if you look at the voters, the voters of the Republican Party apparatus in many places across the country are, in fact, still with the former president. Yeah, yeah but, you know, if, if, you know, let's give Kevin McCarthy credit for saying the right thing. Yeah. yeah. But having okay. said that, mm -hmm. if he really cared about U.S. national security, he wouldn't be holding the debt ceiling hostage because, uh, you know, the threat of blowing up uh, the debt ceiling of the U.S. defaulting on its on its credit um, is a much bigger national security threat than we right. face from anywhere else right now. So it's Kevin McCarthy who's the threat. But Senator, Republicans would say, mm -hmm. we passed a bill. Talk Democrats are just sitting in there in the Senate saying, we're not going to do anything. Clean debt, clean bill or nothing. So doesn't that actually, Kevin McCarthy's made his movie surprise quite a few people by saying this and then 
uh, having them pass uh, uh, an extension of the debt ceiling. What does the Democratic Senate do now? The, 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 the problem with the bill that passed the House is it's not a realistic bill, okay? And I'll just give you one example, and there are many. Uh, in the Veterans Affairs Committee, we passed a bill that allowed for toxic, uh, toxic exposure treatment for our veterans. This bill will eliminate so many people within the VA that that no longer will be available to our veterans, okay? That's just one of many. Law enforcement, you can go down the list. What needs to happen right now is we need to get people with some common sense together and make sure we don't default on our debt. And then, whether it's through the committee process or some other process, get people in the room that will address our deficit and debt, because it is a problem. But you don't do that by defaulting on our debt and putting the full faith and credit of this country at risk, raising increased costs for families, uh, doing away with the retirement accounts, and basically giving the world economy We talk to about China. that all the time here, and, and, and you're exactly right. We can't do that. But again, Republicans have passed a bill. The Republican House passed a bill. When does the Democratic Senate pass a bill? Well, I, I don't know what happens. What I hope happens is, is that the president and the leaders, uh, Republicans and Democrats in both houses, get together and use a little bit of common sense to come forth with a proposal that number one increases the debt ceiling so we don't default on our debt mm -hmm. and number two lays out a plan because this is not going to be easy mm -hmm. to get the deficit and the debt under control and gather the information that's necessary to be able to do this in a way where it doesn't shut down our economy where it really doesn't basically destroy the country from a national security standpoint, as, as was already pointed out, and, and moves the country forward. And But to do it this way is just, uh, I mean, I, I just think it's, it's just, about, number one, totally wrong because it destroys our economy. And number two, it's about getting headlines. And uh, let's, let's do something that's practical, that has common sense, that actually gets us where we need to go. How, though? I mean, there are seven days in which the House and the Senate are both in session where you can work to, how can you do this again, in seven not, days? Not to, not to keep repeating myself. But they pass up. <laughs> but McCarthy's House passed a bill. Sh I mean, shouldn't the Democratic Senate pass a bill and then you do what I, uh, what leaders in the House and Senate have done for, for yeah. uh, centuries? Get together and figure it out? Well, I think, I think this is a better question for leadership, but what I would do if I was in leadership is I would pass a bill that allows us to pay our bills mm -hmm. and then hopefully the House will do something with it. I'm not sure they will. Mm -hmm. And then figure out a way to address the deficit and the debt over the long haul. Amy, how do they that do sure, it? I mean, that sure seems like the plan here right now, which is everybody wants the off ramp mm -hmm. and to be able to say that they got a victory on this. So, obviously, for McCarthy to get everybody, on, almost everybody, on board. Uh, something that looked very difficult for him to be able to do earlier this year was a big win. And it does also suggest that even those loud voices on the Republican side do not want to see this default, are willing to go to a place where they can well, declare and, and victory. Let's just talk the polit politics of it at the end of the day. I mean, we've been all been through this a lot. What happens at the end of the day is there may be five, six, seven, eight extremists, uh, MAGA extremists saying default, 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 we're not going to do this. But at the end of the day, those Republicans that won in Biden districts are going to have a lot of contributors, a lot of people on Wall Street saying, come on, what are you doing? Don't follow MTG get this done. Well, if that is in fact the case, there is a mechanism in the 118th Congress in the rules package where those, you know, and to be, it's more than five Republicans in those districts. I think it's about 11 folks in those Biden right. districts, 11, 11 to 18, 11, 12, right. yeah, 11 to 12, yeah, 18, 18 uh, members. And so they can get together. We just need five to get together with the Democrats within the House, within the House uh, of, of Congress. And then they can bypass this whole kerfuffle that is going on and put a clean bill on the floor. That is something that House Democrats, um, we heard earlier this week that they were, think that they were maneuvering to do, but it was my understanding that there was not an appetite for yeah, that from not. Republicans. Mm -hmm. And so well, I, I well, just- Well, not a clean bill. They're gonna act, there's gonna have to be a negotiation. Sort of. <laughs> why have we not asked the question, why, why, are, why are members of Congress trying to fiddle with the full faith and credit of the United States government? Well, that's exactly yes. the right question. Why the, are we like, The 14th Amendment Come on, of please. the Constitution <laughs> of the United States says you can't do this. Right. Why are we normalizing or accepting exactly. negotiations over something which shouldn't and can't be negotiated. It is